But as alaikum. What we are going to do today is we are going to talk about uh, the organ called mitochondria. If you just want me to translate those words that have combined to form the word con mitochondria, then I'll just go with mito that is thread hmm? and it's chondrian that means granules so what are mitochondria hmm? they are thread or granule that are present in the cell okay present in the cell what are they for what do they do we'll just talk about that in the detail hmm? the first thing you should know is they have two membranes a double membrane bound bound organelle hmm the second thing you should be knowing is it has its own DNA and ribosomes. Okay? This entire thing enables them to be called semi. Auto nomus organelle. Why would you call it semi autonomous organelle all of a sudden out of nowhere? We'll just go in the detail later on, by the way. The function that they put size, okay, let's just go in the size of this. So the diameter, okay, of mitochondria. It goes with 0 0.221 nanometer. Okay? The length of mitochondria may go to 10 micron. Now this is in nanometer and this one is in micrometer. So certainly lengthwise is a little bit long. Okay? So this is what we wanted to know about mitochondria but let's just go in the detail of that function okay this is right function what is the function that these organelles are supposed to perform so there is a function called cellular respiration now we have gone through all the terms we have facts that we can memorize to talk about mitochondria hmm? this organelle was discovered by a scientist his name was Kalliker that was 1857 where he discovered them in the muscle cells okay and since you call muscle the sarco so what he named was sarcosomes and that was truly fine why because mitochondria, because in the muscle cell, the number of mitochondria is, is really, really uh, uh, big. How, sir? In the muscle cell of heart, hmm? heart muscles, there are 300 to 350 50 mitochondria present in a heart muscles. Okay, so this is something. Uh, unusual really 300 to 350 mitochondria present in just a single uh, heart muscles okay so Kalliker actually found them in the muscles of the heart and this is why he called them sarcosome and what did I say sarco is for muscle so how do how do these organelles look like they look like something like a footwear Hmm. This is like they, 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 they look like this is a double membrane. One 
and this is two. The inner membrane has this fluid present in it. What is the name of that fluid? We'll just come to know that. So they say outer membrane we have here. Hmm? Outer membrane and we have an inner membrane. But see, inner membrane has a particular name. Why? Because it has to be, you know, performing a lot of important functions in the cellular respiration that we talked about. So this membrane has a name that's called Christi. Hmm. And that, my friends, has has a lot of complexes embedded in it. Some of them perform the function of the enzymes. So what do you have? You have Christie has the 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 um, electron electron transport chain, and we'll go in the detail of this in chapter number eleven chain. Hmm? And there was a fluid I say this is called mitochondrial matrix mitochondrial matrix okay so this is how the organelle mitochondria look like and then just go in the detail of uh, why it has its own DNA and ribosomes you see evolutionary th these organelles are certainly going to get developed into something called a new cell you see uh, recall from the previous chapters of evolution you have been reading that you know all the organelles are actually the uh, most of the organelles are actually the associations of the membrane they are the parts of the membrane this is why we call them endomembrane system so most of the enzymes have most of the organelles have come from all what the um, uh, you know the membranes this perhaps is also the part of the membrane and this is why it's called the endomembrane system the composition was lipoprotein which means it has lipid the phospholipid and it has the protein in it but you see evolutionary it is going to develop into some new cell you know how how because they have their own DNA and they can have they have their own ribosomes so if you have your DNA and you have protein factories you can guide the formation of different types of of what proteins that can actually be used in the formation of your own body which means that the DNA and ribosome can make proteins and that can help you to make more of yourself you can make more mitochondria by that so if you ask me a question the question is that if a cell has a nucleus and all the other organelles present in it, this one is unique. So why? It has its own DNA, it has its own ribosome, it can self-replicate, which means the nucleus maybe is is as the, all the other organelles maybe are dependent on the nucleus but this organelle here is not dependent it can have a like for example if if ribosome go out if say hmm, ER goes out say Golgi complex go out they might not be living uh, you know outside the cell because they are totally dependent on the nucleus but here in the case of the mitochondria you see something really very different why because they have their own DNA they have their own ribosomes they can self replicate they have their energy resources they can make their own ATPs so who is dependent on who the nucleus is probably Probably dependent on the um, uh, I hope I'm making sense on the mitochondria and not mitochondria is is dependent on the cell so this is what was this perhaps is the reason not just perhaps but surely is the reason why it's called semi semi autonomous semi is half okay and autonomous is is self-working so it's halfway self-working arginally that performs that function this is very important okay this when i say cellular respiration what is cellular respiration you see universal energy is is glucose 
in, in all the living kingdoms, start from Monera to all down to Animalia. Glucose is very, very important source of energy. But the question is, um, is it the utilizable form of energy? In some cell, perhaps, yes. But in most cell, it is not. What is the utilizable form of energy is ATP. Now see, ATP is not readily available in your cells. What you do is you can turn your glucose into ATP. It's just exactly in the same way if you have a hundred rupees note and you note and you want to feed the 14 digit number to your phone, what are you going to do? You're going to buy a 14 number digit out of that 100 rupees question. And then 14 digit number will be put into your phone. The question is, will the 100 rupees exactly going to be fast into your phone? No. 100 rupees exactly is 14 digit number. But the question is, is it utilizable to phone? No, the 14 digit number is utilized. The same is true for the glucose. Of course, glucose is energy. Of course, it's, it's utilizable form in some, uh, some of the different cells. Like if you just talk about the neurons, neurons exactly use uh, 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 glucose. But the question is, the most cells they don't use glucose as the instant source of energy. What they do is they convert glucose into ATP. For that process, uh, for that conversion, you might be needing mitochondria. And the function that this mitochondria is performing of conversion into ATP is exactly what is they, they call the cellular respiration. I hope we have made good sense of this. My colicure and everything is very, very clear. So what is glucose converting into, into ATP? This is what they call cellular respiration. Now see, since the process involves the consumption of oxygen, this is why we call them respiration. So anywhere you see the consumption of, of oxygen and liberation of carbon dioxide, what you call it? You call it respiration. But since this takes place inside the cell, you call it the cellular respiration, or more precisely, it's intracellular respiration that you should be calling it competitive to the extracellular respiration that we sometimes call breathing. So I hope we, we have made a very good sense of mitochondria. The facts are few, so we can memorize these facts so that we can make sure that some of the questions that are being asked, we can answer them. And this is the detail of these, supportive detail for, for this, um, this entire topic here. So what we have is we have mitochondria, a very important, to me it's, it's like, perfect kind of argument to leave. Why? Because this is like me, you know, self-depending kind of uh, argument to leave. This doesn't depend upon anything else or any support it doesn't require. It's a semi-autonomous argument to leave. I would recommend it to be, you know, completely autonomic argument to leave. But yes, a semi-autonomous uh, argument to leave. We, we are done with this whole calculation here. Thank you.